Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Um, Good. When uh, you're in this kind of position and you know it's a big one, uh, number two overall, what, what are the feelings you guys have in the room leading up to it and, and in the moment? And um, is it safe to say that you were kind of comfortable however that wound up landing based on what the Pirates were going to do? Yeah, we had, we had, we liked, you know, five or six guys that we kicked around, but, uh, the, the Skeens kid and, and, uh, and Dylan kind of separated themselves from the pack a little bit. Um, Dylan's a really good player, good tools, great makeup kid, um, profiles in center field, runs well, a uh, strong arm kind of an adva- advanced uh, college hitter. He's got, he's got the hardware to go with it, two-time SEC player of the year. Um, but those were the primarily the two guys that, that uh, separated themselves from the group. And you're picking that, that high, it kind of takes care of itself. And then a lot of the work, most of the work, actually went into uh, pick 40. So as you watch both guys, not just this year, but like this year, you know, at LSU, what ultimately like goes through your mind? You're trying to compare two very different types of players as you decide what your draft board is going to look like. You're speaking of Skeens and Cruz. Yeah, and Cruz, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just depends on what you want. You know, I mean, you'd be happy with both. Uh, Skeens is, you know, if it all works out the way it should, he, he profiles as a front front of the rotation type starter, which is, you know, how you win championships. And, but you also want to profile a guy that uh, stays in the middle of the field. Um, I think that's where you, you try to build it, catcher, shortstop, center field, those kind of guys that are offensive and have tools. Andrew Golden, Washington Post. Hey, Chris, uh, you missed, missed this briefly, but you guys obviously have a lot of outfield talent, especially in center field. How do you kind of see Dylan profiling and where do you think – he ends up, and what do you like about him in the in the outfield? Uh, where he profiles, um, he profiles in in center field. He runs as well. Um, you know, you you have uh, you have some depth in the outfield, like you said. But the, a couple of those guys, you know, Elijah Green, uh, great great athlete, good tools. He's just going to take some time to develop. And, you know, normally you're looking at a, a thousand at bats, 1500 at bats where, uh, you know, all of a sudden it starts to click for him a little bit. So you have to be patient there. Dylan is potentially a guy that, that moves relatively quickly and gets there and, and is here in DC fairly soon. And then with, um, and then there were, you guys took use college bats for your first two picks. Um, did you feel like there was, it seemed like there were a lot of college bats early on in the draft too. Do you feel like it was kind of a, College heavy bat, the top college heavy draft at the top of bats um, and pitching. And what did you think of the college draft overall? Yeah, for sure. There was a lot of college bats, a lot of really good college hitters, uh, not a lot of pitching. Um, you know, you had three or four, four college pitchers. Uh, so there wasn't a ton of depth. Those guys were going to fly off the board fast. Um, but uh, yeah, there was uh, a lot of uh, high school kids as well. But uh, yeah, it was it was a unusual year as far as the depth of the college hitters, position players went. Jessica Camarado, MLB.com. Can you take us through what you saw uh, with Morales at number forty? Yeah, Yo Yo, he's a big, strong, physical corner player. Um, surprising. Uh, uh, speed for a guy his size. He's a t- tick above average runner. Uh, he's a really good defender. He throws above average and uh, power at, at a corner or a corner spot. Um, uh, one of the loudest bats I heard this year. We were pretty happy with that one. Get him at 40. Uh, when the draft began, he was actually ranked by MLB Pipeline as the number 20 prospect. So what were you thinking when you saw him on the board at 40? What was your reaction there? Excited. I mean, we actually had him ranked higher than 20, so it worked out pretty good. <laughs> Bobby Blanco, MassSports.com. Hey, after uh, kind of piggybacking off the of bench question, but do you, can you guys get two Premier college bats like that. What's the upside of drafting 
two college bats as opposed to, you know, the two high school bats that you guys drafted in the first round of the past two seasons? Probably just the timetable of how they get there, you know, mm-hmm. uh, probably show up in the big leagues a little quicker unless something clicks with the other guys uh, a little faster. Um, but th- those guys are going to take a little time. Um, but I would just say the timeline of, of them uh, reaching their potential. Do you guys feel like with the process that you guys are at in terms of rebuilding the the major league team, that that timeline, having a shorter timeline is kind of a key in terms of how you approach the draft? I would say on some level, you're still trying to take the best player available. But, uh, you know, when you ha- we had Dylan at the top and and we had uh, Yo-Yo ranked really high. So uh, to get both those kids where we did today is uh, a positive thing for the Nats. And Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Uh, with Cruz, who came at LSU with all kinds of attention and hype on him and then lived up to it three straight years and played in, you know, big time program, big time conference and in the college world series. How much did you look at, at not just the performance, but the stage that he was on and how he handled, um, you know, a pretty big spotlight that was on him. Yeah, that's, that's important. I mean, that, that's the highest level of competition he can play at right now. And if you think about it, uh, a lot of those pitchers and, and players that he's playing with or against are going to be guys that he plays with with or against in the big leagues. So that's the best competition that he can face at this point. Uh, so it's, you know, that, that was a, a good benchmark for him to, to, to evaluate him as a player. Was the SEC this year a step above even where it has been in the past? And did that, you know, add to that idea of, of really gauging how far along some of these guys are? Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, probably one of the, the best leagues we've seen, the best the SEC has been so far. I think there, the reason for that is you're, you're seeing a lot of uh, kids from uh, who may normally stay in the Pac-12 or the ACC. They're going to uh, the SEC because the the, uh, the competition's better. The the uh, there's bigger crowds. You know, it's uh, it's more appealing to them uh, to to go in and play in front of uh, in that kind of environment. Andrew Golden, Washington Post. Yeah, uh, Dylan and Yo-Yo both obviously come from programs, LSU and Miami, where they were winning is kind of the tradition. How important is it to have guys who come from those winning programs when you're trying to build a winning culture and, and with, with your organization as well? Yeah, kind of the same thing. I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, that's, you know, they're, they're playing against really good competition. And so uh, it makes it easier to uh, evaluate them in the end. Uh, you're looking at a body of work that they've had success uh, in Yo-Yo's case, you can see him, uh, you know, he performed really well this year and, and, uh, but he's gotten better over, over the last couple of years too. So Dylan's, Dylan's been pretty, pretty consistent and, um, kind of, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's been the, he's been the guy there. So, uh, one of the, he was, he was a good player in high school. Um, you know, he took himself out of the draft and, was determined to go to LSU and and bet on himself, and it, wor- it worked out well for him. And we'll finish with Jessica Camarado, MLB.com. Dylan has a wide array of skills and tools. If you had to pinpoint one that you're most excited or intrigued to see develop on the major league level, which one would it be? The bat. I mean, he's, he's really an advanced hitter. Uh, when Dylan's locked in, he's 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 very skilled at driving the ball to right center and uh, working the middle of the diamond. And I think as he progresses at progresses at the at the in the minor leagues and in the major league level, you're going to see him start to pull the ball more. And I think that's where the power is is will start to come into play.